like we have three minutes. Oh, no, three minutes. I think you can hear the birds. Just enjoy. hear some road noise too. But even that can be relaxing. Oh, I hear helicopters. Sounds of the morning. the deck I have a really neat bird feeder pole that Ron made for me so I can see all of those feeders from three different areas of the house. My bedroom's back there. This is the great room and then the kitchen is right there so I can kind of see it. I enjoy the birds. I enjoy my flowers. Enjoy the outdoors. And if you watch, the hummingbird's pretty brave. It may buzz around here, it likes those flowers in the corner. Welcome back for another Friday yoga session. Boy, this week went fast. Our three day weekend went fast despite our unique situation this year. It went really fast, just like every year. So I decided to do this on the deck today. It was looking a little iffy, but I think we're good. I do have my computer and my microphone tucked back into a screened-in room. So if it starts to rain, I'm just going to keep going, and all of my equipment will be safe and sound. A strap would be nice this morning if you have it. If not, don't worry about it. Sitting up on a towel or a blanket is good, too, when we're in this shape. We're going to start out on our back. Lying down on your back. Let's keep the knees bent. Feet on the mat, arms at the sides. Now take your hands to your pelvis, to your hip points. And as you inhale, let the belly rise up and develop a little curve in the lumbar spine. So you're going to anteriorly tilt the pelvis. And then as you exhale, flatten your back. And once you get a sense of that, inhaling to lift the low back, making a nice curve, you can probably even slide your hand in there. 
And as you exhale, flatten. You can either keep your hands there or bring them out to the sides and exaggerate that as you inhale, really arc the low back. And as you exhale, flatten. This pelvic tilting is excellent for low back issues. Inhale. And exhale. Keep going. I'm going to watch the clouds go by. There's not many. Let's do five more. And remember, let your breath be your guide. So the movement isn't hard to learn. Then bring your awareness to your breath. Taking that full inhale to lift the low back. And the full exhale to flatten the low back. And maybe there's a little pause in between each half of your breath cycle. And if that's there for you this morning, let it be. Just pause as you arch your back. And pause as you flatten your back. How about three more? And allow the spine just to be neutral. Bring your hands to your sides with your palms facing down. As you inhale, arc the back. And as you exhale, we're going to lift up into a gentle, a gentle bridge. So lift the hips. And down. Let's make the inhale be the lift. Inhale, lift. This nice, gentle lifting of the pelvis. And maybe you get a little deeper, a little higher with each breath. A little braver, waking up. Inhale. And exhale. Three more of these. And on the third one, let's lift and hold. So lifting up into a nice, gentle bridge. Keep the breath going. Now we're going to bend the elbows. That tin soldier look, toy soldier look. Palms face each other across your belly. And maybe you press into the elbows. Lift the back of your head and tuck your chin and then put your skull back down. Keeping space in the cervical spine and the neck. Keep breathing, maybe tuck the shoulder blades a little. Squeeze those elbows a little tighter towards the midline. And now focus on the knees and push the knees away. Maybe you lift up a little higher. This is a back bend, and it's a beginning shoulder stand. So back bends are energizing. Keep the thighs reaching towards each other. They don't have to touch, but try not to let your knees open wide. It's funny when the birds come and they don't know I'm up here. Come to the feeder and then, ah, they fly away. And then exhale. Come down. As you inhale, reach long. Good morning. Stretch. Now I see an airplane going across the sky. Uh, let's stretch here for a few breaths. Wiggling and swerving. Waking up. And exhale, draw the knees in. Circle through the hips. And play. You can take the hips in the same direction, opposite directions. Just play. You can even start rocking a little from left to right. And keep the right knee and extend the left leg out long, bringing it to the mat. If that bothers your back, of course, bend the left knee, bring the foot to the mat. 
draw the right thigh close to the belly. Do some circles through the right ankle. One way and then the other. And then good morning stretch. Keep your fingers laced. Flip the palms as you reach up. And then exhale, drawing the left knee in. Keep the right leg long, keep it active, flex the foot. Draw the left thigh tight and do circles through the ankle. And keep the fingers laced and good morning stretch. Flip the palms and reach. Now draw the right knee in again. We're gonna take the right knee in the right hand. Extend the left arm out to your side. Squeeze that thigh tight and then open the whole right leg to the right. Take your gaze to your left fingers. Maybe you play a little moving that hip around on the right side, wiggling through the knee. Wiggle those toes. Now back to the midline. And we're going to take the right thigh across the body. Go slowly so you can feel this ripple, this stretch going across the right glute. Bring the right arm out and take the gaze to the right. And again, you can play with straightening this right leg, bending it. Find some stretches. Explore. And inhale back to center. And second side. Left leg in, right arm out, draw the left knee tight, open the left leg to the left, gaze to the right, and then play through the hip here. Wiggle around, and back to the midline, drawing the left thigh across the body slowly so you can really feel that stretch going through the glute, going through the piriformis, taking the gaze to the left, and then play with straightening the leg, drawing the thigh closer. Breathe. And back to the center. Draw both knees in together. Separate the knees out wide. Flex through the feet. Take the hands behind the knees this time. I'll just take a nice, gentle, happy baby. And you can kind of wag your tail here. You're going to wag the tail. I can't think of a better way to describe it. You're going to wiggle through the hips. Now slide your hands down to your toes if you can. If not, you can just take your shins or keep your hands behind the knees. And let's work on stretching through the hamstrings. Just a gentle straightening through the legs. And then softening. Straightening. And softening. Two more. Now bring legs together, hands behind the knees, and let's rock up to a seated position. All the way up to Sukhasana. And again, a blanket here or a towel under the sit bones is quite helpful in maintaining that low back curve that inward curve. That inward curve is called lordosis. And the outward curve of the thoracic spine is kyphosis. Two new words for the day. Sitting up nice and tall. Just pause in our new shape, our new orientation to gravity. Feel the breath. Now take your hands to your knees. We're going to pull on the knees, tilting the pelvis forward again, that anterior tilt of the pelvis. But this time, we're going to take the back bend a little deeper, reach to the crown of the head. So now we're in a seated cow position, extension of the spine. And then round the spine, reach back. Now we're going to posteriorly tilt the pelvis. Flexion through the spine, cat and cow, keep going. Exhale, rounds the spine, and inhale, 
brings you into extension, that back bend, reaching through the crown of the head. Think long spine. Keep the spine nice and long and allow for those natural curves before you begin any movement. Everything is in alignment and space is provided for the blood vessels and the nerves, lots of them coming out between each of the vertebrae. And if you start in a place where you're out of alignment, things are just all pinched up to begin with. Then you run the risk of injury. Let's go one more each way. All right, coming back to neutral. Shoulders up, back and down. Inhale, swing your arms up. Drop your shoulders down. Exhale, bring the right hand down, that eagle talon, or you can bring a flat hand down. Reach up on an inhale with the left arm. Exhale, folding over to the right. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, left arm down. Inhale, reach up with the right arm. Exhale, fold to the left. Keep going, inhale. Exhale, don't forget the upward reach with the inhale. And then fold over. It's easy, you don't want to fold too soon. Inhale, lateral flexion and extension. Let's do one more each side. This time we're going to hold when we fold. Now hold. Keep your left sit bone reaching down as you reach up and over with the left fingertips. Breathe into the left ribs. And as you exhale, maybe you dip down a little lower into this curve. And then cartwheel up and over, second side, exhale, left arm down, inhale, right arm up, exhale, fold and hold. Now the right sit bone reaching down and the right fingertips reaching up and over. Take a big breath and stretch into the spaces between the ribs, intercostal muscles. Costal means rib, intercostal, those muscles in between the ribs. They are secondary respiratory muscles, and they get tired all day, breathing. And then inhale up, bring your hands together. Palms face each other, and exhale the hands onto the heart. Pausing here. Just notice the space we've created already. If you're in this shape with me, just switch the cross of your legs. Do one more thing here before we move on. Bring your hands again to heart center. Simple seated twist on an inhale, arms up. As you exhale, left hand to right knee, swing the right arm back there. Find that eagle talon again, tent your fingers. Lift on an inhale, exhale, twisting to the right. Now pause here. Every inhale reminds you to sit tall. Push your shoulders away from the ears, and at the same time, you reach up through the crown of the head. Now think about the part of your abdomen between the navel and the pelvis, or in the pubic bone. We're gonna reach to the left with that part as we twist to the right with everything above. So you're moving your abdomen in two different directions. Breathe into the belly. Inhale deeply, expand the belly. And exhale, drawing your navel back towards your spine. Two more breaths here. And before we release, turn and look at me. Look at your computer screen or whatever screen you're using. Kind of play with your brain here as you switch your vision, your gaze point. And then release, unwind. Inhale, up. And second side, right hand to left knee, left arm up and around and down, tent your fingers. And notice the difference, why I'm a lot tighter on this side. Inhale, sit tall, exhale, twist. On this side, notice the shoulder blades, your right shoulder blades, since you've got your hand on the knee, is abducting. So it's coming towards your armpit and your left shoulder blade is coming towards your spine. 
shoulders heavy, crown of the head light. Breathe into the belly and then bring the low belly to the right. Everything else is twisting to the left. Big belly breath. So we're using the breath to massage the, the organs in the abdomen, the organs of digestion. And turn and look at the computer. And then unwind arms overhead. Bring the hands together, lace the fingers, flip the hands like we did when we were doing our good morning stretch. And keep the fingers laced and pull the fingers like a Chinese finger trap. Don't let the fingers move, but you're really pulling hard. So an isometric contraction. And we're going to swing the right elbow down and let the left elbow come up behind the head. And back up and over. And up and over. Now this time as you go up, extend the arms straight and then bend and come down. Up and over. Keep pulling. Keep that isometric work going. Up and over. Up. Last one. Over. And then reach. Ah, look up. And exhale the hands home to the heart. Let's come to table. If you're on a blanket, toss that off to the side. Hands and knees. As you inhale, shift forward and exhale back. Inhale forward and exhale back. So as you exhale and you come back, stick those hands to the mat and let the hands be stuck as you really push the hips back and down. Get a nice stretch in the low back and then round the spine as you come forward, shifting, opening up the wrists and exhale back. Let's do two more each way. And back to neutral. Come up onto your fingertips, that eagle talon on both hands, strengthening the support muscles for our wrists when we have our weight-bearing asanas. We're going to walk on the fingertips, nice, slow baby steps until we come to the knee. And then rise up in a kneeling mountain pose. Knees under hips. Shoulders up, back, and down. Extend the left leg out to the left. Flex through the foot, gate pose. I'm going to let this hand slide as I go up and over. Another lateral flexion and extension. Breathe. Tuck your chin to your chest. Look up under your armpit. I can see trees and clouds. And inhale up. We're going to take the right hand. You can use a block under your hand or bring the hand right to the mat. Shoulder over wrist. Keep the shoulders stacked. Hand to hip. Lift the left leg. Lift the left arm. This is modified half moon pose. Arda. Chandrasana. You can stay here or extend left arm up by ear. Draw the heel towards the bottom. Reach back for the heel. Keep the knee lifted. Keep the shoulders stacked. And for stability, look down at your right fingertips. And play with the leg here until you get a nice stretch in the front of the thigh. And then we'll back out, extend the leg long, arm by ear, drop the foot, swing the arm up, and come right up and down. Threading the needle with the right arm, keep the left leg out, right arm goes out, underneath the left, behind the left. Twist here, and then come down on the shoulder. Keep the weight back in the hips. 
Bring your eagle talon, left hand, push down on the mat, twisting your heart to the left. Flatten the left hand, unwind, and draw the knee in. Fingertips, walk to the knees. Kneeling mountain pose, open the shoulders, extend the right leg out, right square to the front edge of the mat. Right hand slides up and over with the left. Reach down with the left knee and up and over with the left fingertips. Tuck your chin, look up under your armpit. Now I see the clouds and breathe. And up and over, planting the hand. Left side, wrist under shoulder, hand to the hip. Stack your shoulders, then lift your right leg, lift your right arm. Swing your right arm up by your ear. Draw your right heel towards your bottom and find your ankle. Keep the knee lifted. Keep the shoulder open. And then play here and see if you can find a stretch in the quads. Front of the right thigh. Take your gaze down to your left fingertips. Ooh, that made me dizzy. And then backing out of this, rising up and right down. Thread the needle. Left arm behind right, twist. And then go down. Eagle talon, right hand, push down, twisting the heart to the right. And breathe. Flat hand on the right, unwind. Knee comes in, big toes together, knees wide. Wide child's pose or happy puppy with your bottom up in the air. And come down to a resting position. Arms can be stacked under forehead, but if your forehead comes easily to the mat, really extend those arms. Same thing here, we're gonna push the hips back. In fact, it helps to stick the hands to the mat pushing the mat forward with allow, without allowing the hands to move, and then the hips automatically go back. Breathe. Now once you settle in, let go. Every exhale, see what else you can relax. Let your shoulders drop down towards the mat. Let your hips really open. Down the back of the rib cage. We'll take about five more breaths here. And with your exhale, really let the heart space drop. So you're coming into a little bit of a back bend in the thoracic spine, the rib cage spine. That's a tough place to get spinal extension. One more. And on an inhale, come back to table. Draw the knees back underneath you, wrists under shoulders. Tuck your toes. We're going to do an elevator down dog. So we're going to lift a little and then a little more and then a little more. And a little more. Keep going until you've lifted into your down dog. There we go. When you get here, pedal the heels, wag the tail, shift around. And find stillness. 
feet are hip distance apart. Ears are right between the upper arms. Swing your right leg back and up, three-legged dog. Bend your left knee and really kick that right leg back up as you extend the left leg long. Again. Reach the heel towards the mat. Now bring your right heel towards your bottom and lift the knee so you're stacking the hips. Keep the shoulders square, really reach through the right arm. Now square the hips again, keep the knee bent. We're going to round the spine, shift forward, drawing and curling through the spine, drawing the knee to the nose, nose to the knee, three-legged plank, inhale back up, three-legged dog. Exhale, three-legged plank. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, this time we're gonna step through, bringing the right foot between the hands. Now check out the feet, make sure they're on railroad tracks and not a tightrope. We're gonna drop the back knee, Inhale, rise up, open the shoulders, swing your arms up by your ears, reach up through the fingertips, drop the shoulders, sink forward, arc the spine, and then back. Forward, and back. Two more, one, And two, let's hold here. Bring the hands together. Extend the index fingers and the thumbs. It's like the Charlie's Angel Mudra, but it's Kali Mudra. This is your sword slicing through anything that gets in your way. Drawing the right hip back and the left hip forward. Reach through the spine. And exhale, bring the fingertips, those eagle talons, left and right edges of your foot. And we're going to extend the hips back, coming into a runner stretch. A bunch of the heel. Keep the heel anchored, drawing that right hip back, left hip forward. Feel how that deepens the stretch. Breathe into the ribs and to the back. And then shifting forward, walk the hands to the inside. Heel, toe the foot to the outside edge of the mat. Let's do some hip circling here. Going one way and then the other. I'm pausing here. You can stay on extended arms or see if you can work your way to your forearms. You can keep that back knee down or tuck the toes, push through the heel and lift the knee. Externally rotating the right foot so the toes kind of go off the mat helps with the knee. Breathe, lizard. And drop the back knee up onto the hands again. Heel toe that foot back in line with your hip. We're going to step back into plank. And let's hold plank. Shoulders are over wrists. Hips are in line with shoulders. Push into the mat. Support your shoulders. If you need to round your back a bit, that's fine. Just don't let your hips sag. Not yet. Let's hold for six more. Three more. On your next inhale, downward facing. And wiggle if you need to. Find some space. Left leg back and up. 
Three legged dog. Bend your right knee and then really kick the left leg up as you straighten through the right leg. Keep the hips square to the mat. Now drop the left heel to your bottom. Stack the hips. Reach through the left arm so you square the shoulders. Shoulders want to twist too. Don't let them. Now square the hips. Bring knee to nose as you round the back and shift forward three-legged plank. Inhale, keeping the knee bent, three-legged dog. Exhale, three-legged plank. This time, we'll step through. Bringing the knee over the ankle. Look at the feet. Railroad tracks. Drop the back knee. Rise up. Now bring your arms up and grab opposite elbows. Hang on like this, really pulling up on the elbows as you drop your shoulders away from the ears as you come into a back bend, sinking into the hips. Exhale. Inhale, back bend. And exhale. Inhale, back bend and hold. And then shoot those arms out straight up by the ears. Bring your hands together, Kali Mudra. Drawing the left hip back, right hip forward. And exhale, fold forward, frame the foot. Walking back, shifting the hips back, coming up onto the left heel. Stretching the back of the left leg. Draw left hip back, right hip forward. Breathe. And inhale back up. Both hands to the inside of the left foot. The knee is right over the ankle. And then heel toe the left foot open. Push down into the hands and then externally rotate those toes a bit. So you line the shin up under the knee. Staying here or coming down onto the forearms. And experience this first. And then maybe you want to come onto the ball of the right foot, press through the heel and lift the right knee. Maybe you don't. Two more. And then exhale, drop the knee. Come on to the hands, heel, toe, the left foot. So it's in line with the hip. And we're going to come into a nice wide child's again. Big toes together, knees wide. Set those hips back. Drop the heart. Reach with the arms and then wiggle the fingers forward and keep dropping the shoulders away from the ears. So don't get all bunched up. Now roll the shoulders out and down, dropping the outer arms towards the mat. So the inner part of the arms, it's almost like you're trying to roll the eyes of the elbows up. Come up on your fingertips. Walk your hands to your right. Let's push down into the earth and send those hips back. Pick up your left hand, stack it on top or beyond the right. Rest your face in your upper arms as you exhale. Let that heart drop, let the hip drop. Inhale into the left rib spaces. And I cross and walk over to the left. Plant the hands, push the hips back and down. Stack right hand on top or beyond left. Rest your face in your arms. And then really concentrate on dropping the heart as you exhale. And as you inhale, breathe into the right ribs.
and unwind. Pressing up into table. Lifting into down dog. Bend your knees a lot. Lay your belly on your chest on your thighs. As you inhale, lift the sit bones straight up. And work to straighten the legs, working the heels down towards the mat. Now bring your gaze between your hands, lift up onto your tippy toes, and take little tiny baby steps, working your way, this time up a tightrope, to the top of the mat. And plant your feet hip distance. Take your thumbs into your groin creases. Push the hips back, straighten through the legs, and then reach out through the crown of the head. Now fold forward, laying the belly and the chest down on the thighs. Soften the knees a bit. Grab opposite elbows again. Now switch your grip. So it's going to feel like your least comfortable way. Hang. And sway, but sway with intention. Okay, stretch in the side body. And drop your fingertips in front of your feet. We're gonna walk the hands to the right corner of the mat. Now let your arms hang, let your head hang. We're gonna rise up in sunflower. Keeping the knees bent until you rise up. You're like a flower rising up. Your face follows the sun. And then fold the other way. And second side, inhale up. Face follows the sun. And exhale, fold. Now lock the fingertips in front of the feet again. Pull the feet away from each other. Inhale, swing the arms up. And exhale, hands home to the heart. And arms to the side. Let's find mountain pose. Tadasana. So I'll wiggle here a bit. Find your mountain pose. Find that alignment. Take your hands to your hips again. And let's do a little anterior posterior tilt of the spine. We're going to tip the pelvis forward. Maybe I'll turn. I'm going to tip forward. This is an anterior tilt. Forward tilt. I'm going to tuck the tailbone and posterior tilt. Anterior and posterior. And as you tuck, see if you can bring the inseams of your pants back. So it's an internal rotation of the thighs. You're going to broaden through the back. Otherwise, when you tuck, you just kind of crunch into the glutes. So as you tuck, internally rotate the thighs. And then a forward tilt and a back tilt. One more each way. So this is so good for low back. And then find mountain pose. I've been doing a lot of sewing while we've been home. And boy, sitting in that chair, and I know many of you have been working from home, and I bet you're sitting a lot too. So just doing that anterior posterior tilt of the Low back really helps my lumbar spine. Otherwise, I get really sore back here. Okay, let's do some work from Utkatasana, chair pose. From mountain pose, inhale, arms up. Now send your bottom back as you reach your fingertips down towards your ankles. Maybe you even touch the mat. Inhale, rising up into chair. A holding chair. So here we're going to draw the elbows inward towards each other. Bring the little fingers towards each other. This is an external rotation of the arms. Now bring your hands to heart. We're going to lift the left leg. So you're staying in chair. This is called little bird. And hold. Step back with the left leg. Come on to the ball of the foot. See if you can be on railroad tracks. We're going to come into crescent lunge. Reach up with the hands. Bring your hands into Kali Mudra again. Drawing right hip back, left hip forward. Breathe. Shoulders down away from the ears. Crown of the head rises up. 
Exhale, hands to heart. Push your hands back, step forward, mountain pose. Inhale up, exhale, fold, hip creases. Hook the thumbs in the hip creases, push the hips back as you lift halfway up, crown of the head reaches forward. Exhale, fold. Swing the arms out and up. And exhale, the hands home to the heart. Second side. Arms forward and up. Send your bottom back. Bend your knees. Touch the mat if you can. Inhale. Utkatasana. Powerful pose. You should be able to lift your toes easily. And then spread the toes and place them down one at a time. Hands to heart. Lift the right leg. Just hover, baby bird. Stepping back, ball of the foot, railroad tracks, getting ready for high crescent lunge. Pulling left hip back, right hip forward, lift your prayer. Keep that back bend. Breathe, Kali Mudra, find your sword. And this time as you exhale, fold forward, step back into plank, and let's hold. Hold for 10 breaths. You can always drop one knee or both, and you can always take a child's knee. Listen to your mind. Step back and watch what it's saying to you. Four more. Now wiggle back on the balls of the feet. Keep the shoulders over the wrists or a little forward. Now drop your hips. Bring the tops of the feet to the mat. I cobra. You can bend your elbows a bit here. Breathe. And exhale, lower down. I'm going to have to wiggle back so I don't plant my face down in it. That's my crocodile. Forearms under forehead, legs left and right edges on the mat. Bend the knees here and windshield wiper. Left and right. Release the legs to the mat. We'll pause here. With your forehead on your hand, turn on your head side to side. Massaging across the forehead. And find stillness. come to a seated position if you have a strap you can get the strap if not not a big deal you can always use um, a towel for a strap too so I mentioned I think in most classes that if you have something like a strap a belt um, a robe bathrobe belt uh, just anything to keep handy for classes if you have blocks that's nice and I've said before, oftentimes I'll say, oh, get books. I don't know. Books tend to slip and slide. So if you don't have blocks, we'll manage with that. Or um, also blankets, towels to slip under your bottom. Or if the knees are out you, you can also always put that little pad underneath the hips. Let's come into Dandasana for staff pose. Bring the strap if you have it off to the side. If not, not a big deal. Take the hands behind you. Fingers point forward. Really open up the chest. Elbows draw towards each other. Lean back. 
push down into the hands, lift the pelvis, lift the ribs up away from the pelvis. Keep that space as you come forward. Keep that inner curve of the low back. And we're going to bring the strap around both feet. And wrap your hands in the strap. If you don't have a strap, not a big deal. You're just going to do it without the strap. You can bend the knees a little bit. Unless you're really flexible, keep the legs out straight. Sitting tall. I notice the lumbar spine. There should be that forward tilt of the pelvis here. So you have that nice inward curve, that lordotic curve. And then work to straighten. And then maybe you fold forward any amount. Breathe into the back. Keep pulling the feet if you have the strap away from each other. Don't let the pull of the strap bring your feet together. Keep them open. Notice how that works the outer hips. Achimottanasana. Inhale up. And take the strap off. Bend the right knee. Bring the right heel really close to your bottom. Keep the right knee in line with the hips. Sit tall. Now we're going to twist. Take the left elbow around the right knee, and you can pull that thigh in close. You can do your I Dream of Genie arms here, grabbing opposite elbows, sitting tall and twisting. Or you can eagle talon the right hand, pushing down and twisting to the right. The same thing with the low belly. From the navel to the pubic bone, See if you can bring that more to the left. As you're twisting more and more to the right with everything, excuse me, above the navel. Breathing deep in the belly, make it hard to breathe by drawing the thigh close. Feel how that opens up the back with the breath. And then face forward, drop that knee out. You can take the sole of the foot to the inner thigh, or like I like to do, tuck the foot under the thigh. Serves two purposes for me. My hamstrings are tight, so it helps lift the knee so I can fold further forward. It also gives me a nice stretch in the top of the foot. Keep the left foot flexed if you have your strap, and if not, just do it without the strap. Sit tall. Inhale, shoulders away from ears. Exhale, fold. You walk down the strap. And then work to push that left knee down into the right foot. Feel how that engages the stretch in the back of the left thigh and the hamstring. It's starting to get windy like it's gonna rain. And inhale, rise up. Take that strap off. We're going to lift the right ankle and place it past the left thigh. Number four hip stretch. And even in this shape, you can get a little opening through the right hip by taking the hand and gently opening so it's downward and outward. And take your hands behind you, sliding, again, reaching the elbows back towards each other, lifting through the chest, and sliding the left foot to the mat into a seated number four. You can decide how deep you want to take this. Keep pushing the knee out to your right and forward towards me. Now extend the left leg again and we'll come into um, fire log pose or double pigeon or you can come into sukhasana. So double pigeon or fire log pose is when it's like stacking fire logs. Knees are right over ankle, and ankle is right over knee. Now there's a little space here for me. If you have a lot of space here, if this just isn't comfortable, do sukhasana, crisscross, or you can bring some support under that knee. Sitting tall, and maybe you fall forward. Maybe you bring your forearms down to the mat.
Three into the back. Now we bunched up the belly here, so the belly is not going to be able to expand. So that expansion occurs in the back body. You can really stretch those muscles with your breath. Come up on the fingertips. Hands behind you. Unwind. Dandasana. Find your strap again. Pachimottanasana. Dandasana is um, staff pose. Sitting up on the sit bones, folding forward, Pachimottanasana, intense west stretch. And inhale up, take the strap off, bending the left knee. Bring the foot to the mat, heel close to you. And then up on the sit bones, like you're going to stand up on this left leg. Up, keeping the thigh close. Keeping the right leg active by flexing the foot. Wrap your right elbow around your left knee. You can do your I Dream of Genie arms here to, to twist or take the left hand eagle talon behind you. Push down, rise up through the crown of the head, and you can probably flatten the hand. Keep the hand close to the hip though, so you're not leaning back. Keep the hand really close to the hip. Shoulders away from the ears, twist and look over the left shoulder. Bring the low belly to the right. And breathe. I don't know, I see a little blue sky over here. Who knows what it's gonna do. Now unwind and open the left knee to the left, sole of the foot to the inner thigh or tuck the foot. This is Janu Shirshasana. You can use the strap or not. This time I'm not gonna use it. So start from a nice tall spine. So you're not rounding your spine to get down there. You start with a tall spine. You fold over the hip crease, bringing the belly down, then the chest. Keep thinking long spine, extending through the spine. And then cross your hands. And wherever your hands land, pull. Push that knee down towards the mat. Feeling the stretch in the right hamstrings. Breathe in the belly. Feel that stretch in the back. And inhale up. Take the left ankle past the right thigh. And again, here, sit tall. Sit tall. It's easy to want to round through the back. Sit tall. Both feet are flexed. This foot being flexed protects the knee. Now push maybe into the knee and push the knee gently outward and downward. Now hands behind you. Reach elbows towards each other. Slide the foot up. Seated number four. Breathe. Keep pushing the knee away and out. And fire log or double pigeon this side or sukhasana. And notice the difference. Keep both feet flexed, protect your knees. Try to line your shins up. Ankles and knees are lined up as well. Sit tall. And maybe you fold forward. And maybe notice difference left and right. And then rise up. Boy, today went fast. It's time for a little Shavasana. Go ahead and lie down on your back and do any last minute movements that you might need. Settling into corpse pose, constructive rest. Find a place where you feel completely supported, able to let go and relax. I'm gonna stay in a seated position. And I hope you can hear the wind in the trees. And I hope you can hear the birds. And you know how this goes. Let it all go. 
keep your mind anchored. Pick something to anchor your mind to. And gently bring your mind back to that focus, whatever you choose. As many times as you need to. Resting for a few brief moments of stillness. Listen to the sound of the chimes. Do nothing more. Let that sound come. And let the sound go. I'm going to strike the chimes two more times. See if you can feel, hear the vibration of the sound waves. Begin to deepen your breath now. And you know this routine too. Good morning, stretch. Draw the knees in. Move around a little. Find your way to your right side. And give your eyes a little love. Letting them open and close. So they're finally open and find your way back to a seated position. Thank you for joining me. I didn't have any raindrops. It looks like it's getting cloudy though. If you've never done yoga outside, oh, you need to do that sometime. I teach out here as much as I can. This may be the first one for the 7 a.m. class. I can't remember for sure, but boy, it's nice out here to sound sights and the breeze and oh, it's really nice. Bring your hands to your heart. May you have peaceful thoughts, peaceful words, a peaceful heart, and a peaceful world. Namaste. Thank you.